It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. You can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting, uh, either through my website, emailrevealer.com, or you can email me directly at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. Now, if you like our show, be sure and check out our Patreon, because Everything you hear on Monday to Friday, AM, FM, radio, you can find on the Patreon, plus extra, but with all the commercials and the ads all cut out, it's all ad-free. Um, our, our archives are free always on Spreaker.com. You go there Friday night. I do a live show every Friday night. As a matter of fact, you should join my Instagram, Opperman Report Instagram, because that's how you'll get a notification of when we put up new content on Spreaker.com. I'm really excited about our guest today. He's a local attorney in Florida, Daniel Ufelder, and his, his law firm is called uh, DWULaw.com. Daniel Ufelder, you can find him on uh, Twitter at DWUHLFELDER Law. This guy's got like 260,000 followers, and he's doing full blown reports and investigations on his Twitter. I don't know how he finds time to do this stuff. He was right on top of the stuff with the whole thing with the migrant uh, flights coming out of Florida. Uh, he runs another site called, uh, on Twitter called Remove Ron. Ron DeSantis, he's talking about. Check out his uh, Substack. Daniel Ufelder, Substack.com. And the best way to, to do this, though, is go to Twitter, and all the links are on there. And he's got this incredible article up there about uh, the DeSantis Den of Deplorables. Mr. Daniel Ufelder, are you there? Yes, yes. Thank you for having me. No, thank you so much. So tell us about yourself. Who is Daniel Ufelder? Well, yeah, I'm a Florida native, second generation Florida native. I've lived all over the state. I'm a 50 year old man. I just turned 50. I got a great family, a beautiful wife, and two young teenagers. And um, I've been, you know, I'm a lawyer here in North Florida. I've uh, been, you know, kind of an activist as well, you know, throughout my life. And um, but basically, yeah, I'm just a, a Florida man. I, I consider myself a good Florida man, uh, <laughs> someone who cares about. Uh, doing the right thing about not, you know, being afraid to stand up to calling truth to power, whether it's, you know, any party. And so it's a, uh, I, I, yeah, I have a committee. I had a committee start to remove Ron. I did run for Florida Attorney General. Uh, some people knew me as the Grim Reaper that traveled the state at the early start of COVID. But yeah, basically, I'm just someone that really um, cares about fairness and truth and standing up to folks that are not in that line in that vein and we have a lot of them here in the state of florida unfortunately yeah it we really need someone in the office of attorney general in florida uh, to keep an eye uh, on a balance of what's going on here and I, I come here from vegas where we had our mayor oscar goodman was the attorney for uh, tony the ant spilatro okay <laughs> and frank Collada. but i come down here and i even i i'm blushing when i come down to florida Let's start with Ron DeSantis. Um, what do you? What can you tell us about DeSantis? Like the the, the general country sees him as this uh, great governor, but what can you tell us about his past? And he worked at Gitmo. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, it is. It is very strange. I think that he is getting this some sort of yeah pass and. Um, mention that he's a moderate or a centrist or sensible. I mean, he's none of those things. He he is a... I say this without any hesitation because I've been dealing with this person for the past almost three years now. I believe him to be one of the most dangerous mm -hmm. human beings on the planet right now. And I don't say that with any... I say that with a lot of information, a lot of concern about our future, and I think that he is very dangerous on a number of fronts, and that's why I've, I've dedicated as much time as I have uh, to try to expose him and, and show people who he really is. Yeah, so a quick question then about Dan Ufelder. Um, all, all this work you do on Twitter, do you have like a, and it's the sub stack, do you have like a research team helping you out, or you do this all on your own? I, no, I pretty much, it's um, me, yeah. I mean, I, I grew up in a family of people politically involved. Uh, I've been in public service, and I 
I'm a good researcher on myself. I mean, part of what I do as an attorney is, yeah. is write and research. So, yeah, I, mean, I I am very much – I remember as a kid when I my dad is a lobbyist in Tallahassee, and we worked on campaigns. And as a kid, we don't, I'd always enjoy going with him. Before You know, people used to have uh, – people get the newspapers. You know, we'd go and get every Sunday or Saturday, we'd, like, get – all the state newspapers or the clips and that's kind of how you know i was always interested in what's going on and the news and you know trying to get the facts out there so yeah it's kind of been part of my dna as long as i remember to be uh, aware of what's going on and being informed and and re- you know when i say something or when i post something or when i publicize something i make sure that it's fully vetted and verified because I think, you know, what we have a lot of this day and age is a lot of misinformation. It only takes one bit of misinformation for someone like me or one mistake or one error to taint everything else I've worked for. So I I really work hard to verify and, you know, because we're going, we're talking about very well-known people and well-known issues and I mean, yeah, it takes a lot of work, but it's it is it's important work it's important work to be aware uh in this day and age and and call out things and keep track of things and verify things because that's there's so much misinformation out there that is so true uh, so i invited you on the show to talk about the santis den of deplorables on your substack uh but ken kent sturman i guess posthumously should be on that list yes i mean actually it is um when i published that article it actually was the day that um, the news came out of his passing and um, I did not mention him in the article but I have uh, Mr. Sturman apparently has been referred to as DeSantis's best friend uh, he's, <laughs> he was um, early on supporter of DeSantis when DeSantis was in Congress he uh, let him live in his one of his uh, condos so he could be in the district where he was running uh, there was a complaint filed against DeSantis for uh, while he was in Congress because this man had did some lobbying and there was questions as to whether he was charging fair market value mm. uh, he was the inner of the inner, inner circle he was appointed to the University Board of Governors, and then apparently um, he also had for five years until recently a free pass basically to the Jacksonville uh, Sheriff's Office and headquarters and jails and substations, and um, he apparently killed himself, I think it was this week, this, this a week ago today, um, in the parking lot of a post office. Uh, while he apparently was under a criminal investigation for sexual misconduct. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I've clearly um, people, you know, he's got a family. He's got, you know, I feel horrible for mm. what family, but I mean, what is not being, no one really is addressing is, I mean, some people are, but not to the degree that I think is noteworthy is this man's relationship with the governor of the state of Florida, who is the, I guess, presumptive nominee to be the Republican uh, candidate for president. Yeah, it is quite shocking. What was the manner uh, of the death of a uh, uh, gunshot? A gunshot, yeah. He shot him. Apparently, he shot himself. In the okay. Head. Now, with this pass that he had to get into the Jacksonville Sheriff's Department, what what was he capable of doing? Not, not, we're not accusing him of doing what, what was he capable of doing with that pass? Well, I mean, apparently, uh, and there's records that show that he did, he was there, like, at least several times a, several, several times a week. He was <coughs> going to the sheriff's headquarters. Uh, looks like he went to some of the substations. They went, apparently, to one of the uh, actual jails themselves. Uh, I mean, I, I guess he was basically, as a private citizen, he was, appears that he had unfettered access like a law enforcement officer. And... <laughs> Which is shocking. I yeah. Mean, I mean, it's really for a private citizen to have this amount of access to, in this manner, is, is just shocking. Because there was some kind of uh, float that uh, he was going to the gun range. Is that possible? Uh, I don't know anything about that. Okay. I don't know about that. So. Oh, okay. Now, what was the nature of these sexual charges? Um, can you hunt? Sure. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, what were they? Well, that's what we don't know. I mean, basically, um, they haven't reported what it is, but it's apparently, um, you know, sexual misconduct. Gotcha. So Florida is really becoming unaffordable to people that that don't have the you know a good amount of wealth, and so, and that's because the people who we've been electing don't care about them. Yeah. Okay. The next one on your list here is Rep. Joe Harding. Right. This is a good one. Yes. Yeah, so, as we know. The one of Governor DeSantis' favorite groups to target is the uh, gay, lesbian, uh, LGBTQ community. That's like his. I think he's got a top five list, and they're probably the very top, right. and close to it. So he got this guy, this Joe Harding, who's uh, basically a nobody, who out of Central Florida to sponsor this bill that you know it's called the Don't you know. It's, we call it as the don't say gay bill because it's basically a bill to try to demonize delegitimize folks that aren't white male heterosexual uh in the school system you know i've seen here where they've been banning books that are that have pictures of two men sitting next to each other or or books that talk about you know by tony morrison so i mean it's called the parental bill of rights which is a, a joke and so this man who also introduced a bill that wanted schools to be able to out students you know, if a student was wanted, was uh, uh, homosexual or, uh, you know, not heterosexual, he, they, he was supposed to build the one of the teachers in school to be able to out these kids to their parents. He, he withdrew that. But the Don't Say Gay Bill was sponsored by this guy, Joe Harding. Well, this guy who got the Christian Leadership Award and was Ron DeSantis' right-hand guy on this attack on the rights of, of folks, uh, was indicted last week on six counts of including wire fraud and money laundering because he lied to the Small Business Administration in order to get over $150,000 in COVID relief funds for businesses that did not, in fact, exist. He actually said that these businesses had numerous employees and, and that he needed this money, and it was just a lie. And so he got indicted. He quit the he was uh, He got removed from all his committees, and then he, he resigned. So, you know, the poster boy for Ron DeSantis' don't say gay bill is just a, just a too big crook. You know, he's just a crook. And so that's kind of consistent with his, uh, you kind of, uh, what I see a lot of this projection where you've got um, uh, the Republicans talking about, you know, sexual predators or, or criminals. And, and what they're really is projecting themselves. I mean, that's what they are. I mean, you know, you know, that's, uh, I, this, you know, we'll go into some of these more of these other people. But, yeah, I mean, these, the Republican Party likes to say they're the law and order party. Uh, they're really just the criminal party. I mean, and I say that with some... Some disdain, and some you know, some up, some uh, some regret because I was a Republican for a long time. I, I was a de- Republican for 15 years, and I, I, I left that party. I could no longer be a part of that party. That 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 uh, it is who it is. So this Joe Harding, he's going back. I guess he's looking up 35 years in pr- federal prison. Um, you know, it's kind of quick how things turn in the, the DeSantis world. I mean, you know, one day you're DeSantis' point person on a huge peach of legislation, and the next day you're looking at 35 years in federal prison. So one day you're, uh, you know, roaming the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office with free unfettered access as Ron DeSantis' best friend. The next day you blow your brains out with a gun in the post office. I mean, it, things move real fast in DeSantis' world, and it's usually pretty, if you look at who his people around him are, they're they're deplorables, and that's where I came up with the den of deplorables. Yeah, and they kind of like walk away like those uh, hitman scenes in Casino, you know, like everybody walks away from the corpse, you know. Now, yeah, oh, no, you know, just kind of walk. Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, well, don't I mean, you know, yeah, basically, and DeSantis walks away without any. Uh, and he bag it. And he, you know, it's basically, oh, well, yeah, this guy, I was standing a few months ago. Sturman was my best friend. He put me up in a condo. He was the top appointee to the governor's, to the board of governors. He's getting to go roam the jail. Next day, he blows his brains out. Oh, well, I don't know this. I mean, okay, let's go ahead and start a grand jury into investigating uh, COVID vaccine. I mean, it's distract- yeah. I mean, I mean, this guy, Joe Harding, a few months ago, he's standing, and they're standing in a, at, a, at a school uh, in uh, Pasco County, and he's like, Joe Harding, this is my guy. He's got this bill through. A few months later, he's indicted by federal, uh, by the U.S. attorney for uh, money laundering. I mean, these, these are his people. I mean, it's a yeah. pretty basic 
precept that if you want to know who uh, the, the measure of a man, look who he surrounds himself around. And to, to step back to Sturman for a second, now, was he under investigation by that same Jacksonville Sheriff's Department that he had the access to? Apparently, yes. So oh, there was well. an election. But there was an election. If you look at the records, uh, there was an election in November, I think it was uh, November 8th for a new sheriff. And then November 15th was the last day he had access. So I don't know whether the new sheriff, you know, I don't know. I mean, but but, but there is an open criminal investigation involving this man. And the only, you know, in terms of criminal uh, sexual crimes in this state, there are only certain ones. There's trafficking, there's prostitution, there's sex with minors. So, you know, they probably got to fall in one of those categories. That would, and I can't imagine, um, you know, what would prompt a 50-year-old healthy man with a family, with millions of dollars, with your, the next potential president of the United States being my best friend, pull into a post office parking lot and blow his brains out. It's got to be something pretty bad. Yeah. You know? Clearly. Have you been following the story about the Kathy Aru, the, the liberal Sherpa from Fox News? I have not. Okay. I don't watch Fox News. Yeah, because she was just arrested down. And she filed a lawsuit against the Hannity and Carlson. She was a Fox News contributor. And she filed a lawsuit against them. It was thrown out. And then suddenly she just gets arrested the other day uh, in Florida um, for uh, charges of... Um, Kidnapping her mother and taking her to her nursing home against her will, uh, but also too like taking out credit cards in her mother's name and uh, taking a loan on the house. Uh, in your experience as a criminal defense uh, lawyer, are those charges normally prosecuted? I don't know enough about. What yeah, I mean, uh, what is she charged with? We'll, we'll move on. If you're not familiar with it, there's no point in that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, there's enough criminal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's hard enough for me to keep up with the criminals that are, you know, that are surround Ron DeSantis. If there's another one, I, you know, I've got a long list here that, <laughs> that yeah, I, I'm not aware of that. But, I mean. <laughs> I hear you. Matt Gates. Well, Matt Gates. And I know Matt Gates. He was he lives in this area, um, in North Florida. Um, Matt Gates. There's a few people that I believe that got Ron DeSantis to like the governor. One is Matt Gates. One is Donald Trump. Matt Gates helped navigate his getting the endorsement from Donald Trump. And Donald Trump, once he endorsed DeSantis, he won the primary. He was not the favorite in the primary. In 2018, as a Republican, Matt Gates was his right-hand man until I guess he gets caught with allegations of sex trafficking. So he is now not in the inner circle. That's from what I, you know, I understand. But he, cert- Ron DeSantis, would not be in the governor's mansion but for Matt Gates. That's very interesting. You're saying that he's no longer allied with DeSantis. I have yet to see where they've been publicly in the same place since this all came out. I think I would guess it was early last year. Yeah, yeah, and, and then those charges include that uh, he would uh, go to the tax collector's offices in the middle of the night with his friend Joel Greenberger and uh, re- retrieve the the. Dry- yeah, there's uh, there's alleg- Joel Greenberg, who I guess we'll get down to the road. But yeah, he was one of Joel Greenberg's close friends, and there was out al- there was suggestions that Matt Gates was having sex with underage with women under eighteen and paying for it in traffic, you know, sex trafficking. Yeah, yeah, and also obtaining those driver's licenses, assumably to to give to his underage girlfriends. Um, and they're, they're, I yeah, yeah. I mean, Greenberg was the Seminole County tax collector, and he was using that office as pretty much his crime syndicate location. And um, he and he and uh, Gates were, were the best, you know, good buddies. Well, then let's do Joel Greenberg now. We'll go out of order. We'll get back to the other guy, uh, um, uh, Mr. Bashirs. Uh, let's get into Joel Greenberg. What can you tell us about him? Well, Joel Greenberg was the former Seminole County tax collector, and Seminole County is one of very fast-growing counties in central Florida. And he just uh, pled guilty uh, and got 11 years in federal prison 
for using taxpayer funds to pay for sex with underage girls, uh, at least one of whom he told in federal guest investigators that he witnessed Matt Gates also having sex with. So he is, um, he's, he's in, he'll, be, he's, he'll be in federal prison for the next 11 years. Um, did you yeah, photo. Yeah. Go ahead. Did, did you happen to see the YouTube videos of his standoff with the police with the Tannerite? He, oh, he, which I mean, he used to come to the. He, he was a similar. He was a tax collector, and he used yeah. to come armed to the office. I know he. I mean, basically, what this is, it's like a fraternity of just derelicts and deplorables. Yeah. I mean, this guy Joel Greenberg, who was you know comes from a wealthy family like Gates who became tax collector. There was a candidate who was going to run against him, and they created this whole smear campaign against him, making up all these horrible, false allegations about just really sick stuff, which turned out to be stuff this guy, what Greenberg was doing. And so it kind of emanated from there. And so Greenberg knows a lot. I mean, he he, um, he got, he, he his sentence was, I believe, significantly reduced because of his cooperation and in giving information to um, the federal, the feds. And, you know, and, but it looks like at this point, you know, so far, uh, Congressman Gates has not been yeah. indicted. But, you know, he's had... His father is um, worth several hundred million dollars. A lot of people know about Matt Gates. His father was president of the Senate in Florida, for, which is one of the most powerful positions in the state of Florida for a lengthy period of time. And he um, he, he was able, if you look at who Mr. Uh, uh, Gates hired, he, he hired the lawyers. That he, I think there's nothing wrong with having good representation. I, I believe in that myself, clearly. But he had the means to hire lawyers that represented he had a team out of new york that was represented the mafia you know so he had he had the he had the dream team legal representation to um to represent him in this um and you know and so far he's been able to stave off the any indictment i think the issue from what i understand is that the the, the main material witnesses to this underage uh sex allegations are mr greenberg and the the woman herself, and I think, from what I understand, that they've tried to you know destroy the credibility of of those two, and that's from maybe why you know he has not been indicted. Yeah, I, I happen to know that there's been a, a year long uh, investigative reporting on Matt Gates, and there's an eleven thousand word uh, magazine article about to come out. Uh, on uh, all of this, uh, so hopefully that one would would a major publication, nationwide publication. So hopefully, yeah. I mean, I, the fact yeah. that I mean, the, 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 just because Matt Gates has not been indicted doesn't mean he's innocent. No, no. no. <laughs> Look, yeah, I mean, he, he is not innocent. I mean, he, I, you know, I have no doubt that he committed significant crime, and that, but because of his position and his wealth and his yeah. connect. He's been able to, you know, what, he asked for a pardon, you know. Right. What do you need a pardon for if you're innocent, you know? So he wanted a, bull, he wanted like a blanket, pre he wanted like the pardon of all pardons because, you know, who knows how many crimes he's committed on a regular basis. But, you know, Matt Gates is a criminal. I mean, he's, you know, this, this, he's a serial criminal. I mean, he's, I mean, he, he, I don't know how many DUIs he's had in his, just in his young career. But, yeah, I mean, I have no doubt that he broke the law and, you know, but he just, when you're a congressman and you have a father that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars that can get you out of trouble, then, you know, it's hard, you know, and he may not, I don't know, maybe they will eventually indict him, I don't know, but, you know, it hasn't happened yet, so. And, and, you know, with Greenberg, there's a YouTube video out there that um, when the marshals uh, wanted to affect the uh, arrest warrant because he violated his uh, terms of his release, he had a tether, you know? Okay. And the local cops pick up the phone and say, hey, call me up, we'll we'll help you out. It's all on YouTube, they got the whole 911, everything. Oh. Yeah. Well, and then they show up at his house, and he's telling them, I've, I've oh, buried right. Tannerite in the lawn as IUDs, and if you come on my lawn, I'm going to shoot it. D- did you see that? Yes, I remember that, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, he, yes. Well, they, they are, in, they feel entitled. I mean, yes. Got, yes. I mean, it's really, it's an entitlement. I mean, Matt Gates has never had a real job, has never had any responsibility. He's the son of a uber-wealthy fixer who fixes DUIs, he fixes this, that, you know. Yeah. And so they just get away with stuff. I mean, you know, so, and until you hold them accountable, which part of, you know, what people ask me, why do you care about 
Well, I care because I care about the law, and I care about you know if you if you no one should be above the law, and if you if you let people like these pass, it really diminishes the the profession I'm in because. Uh, not, uh, if, if this person, anyone other than Matt Gates would probably be in prison. I mean, mm-hmm. but I mean, or you know, so it's it's really what is happening is people are able to buy their way out of legal accountability through their connections, through their money, through whatever. Yeah. And we're looking at that, you know, and that's what this guy surrounds himself with. They're just deplorable. I mean, they're, you know, this guy, Larry Keith, was the U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Florida who is running a kidnapping, human trafficking operation. I mean, it goes from law enforcement to, in my opinion, law breaking. I mean, that's the first, the last job was prosecuting law. Now, but, but who's going to do anything about it? I mean, people are afraid of the same thing. You yeah. Know, you come after him and he comes after you. So I mean, it's it's really, it's really, it's, it's really, chilling. It's, it's chilling. Really it's chilling. It, it, yeah, it, yeah. So it, yeah, that's no. It's really. It, I mean, yeah. yeah, they've come after me. I've been attacked. I've been. They tried to affect me and my license and my family. I get. You know, mm. I like I get a day. You know, whatever. I mean, it's just I just put it. You know, they just. But you know, <clears throat> that's why I have to keep doing what I'm doing because nobody else is doing it. Frankly. Former Rep. Housley Bashirs. What can you tell us about him? Okay, yeah, he's yeah. A lot of people don't know about him. So he uh, he was in the he was in the legislature with Gates. Um, he was appointed by um, DeSantis to be the head of the Department of Business and Professional Regulation, which basically regulates all the businesses. Well, he got kicked out because of his relationship and these trips that were going on uh, out of the country with these underage girls. So he, he quit. Um, you know, he, there was an all expense trip phase to the Bahamas, you know, with escorts, um, you know, basically with DeSantis regularly. Uh, he was also well known for making the medical marijuana laws more favorable so that his own family to get one of the licenses. He's just another, yeah, he's kind of, there's levels of deplorable, I mean, in the Santa's circle, this guy is not as well known, but, you know, there's probably many others in addition to him, but he quit the legislature. He was one of, you know, Gates' party buddies that, you know, was under, I think, he, I don't, he hasn't been indicted, but he was under federal investigation for for these trips they took um, and, and these sex trafficking allegations. So, you know, it's just another one of his uh, scumbag friends. You know? What do you know about the, the medical, the, the marijuana lobbying going on down here? Because it seems like that it's very, very powerful in Florida. It's controlled by the medical uh, marijuana and that there will never be recreation marijuana down here because of their hold over the lobby down here. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. and it's, it's an interesting, if you look at some of the history of this Gates, Greenberg, Bashirs, um, some of the others, it did seem to emanate out of some um, marijuana activity because there was a man, I think a doctor, uh, who was also involved. In, uh, but yeah, Gates was one of the early actually proponents of marijuana reform in Florida. Um, and, you know, he got, they basically set up a way that there would be certain potential vendors. To, so it's like five or six that control the whole market, basically. And it's really hard to get that license. And you pretty much have to be one of a very connected individual to get that because it's just very exclusive. And so, um, you know, Bashir's family was uh, had a, owned uh, America marijuana uh, entity, and they he was able to help steer uh, get uh, his family get one of the very uh, get, get a get a license that's worth. I don't know. You can't even calculate how much. It's just millions and millions of dollars. So. Oh, yeah, no, it's huge money, huge money. I guess you have to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. It's basically, yeah, yeah. You want to, There are very few marijuana licenses in the state of Florida, and in order to get them, you basically have to, you know, be on that plane to the Bahamas. <laughs> Here's the, several of those. Yeah, that, that plane to the Bahamas had. Uh, that's yeah. That plane. <laughs> that's yes. That plane to the Bahamas. Um, had a good portion of the people who were controlling the medical marijuana market 
in Florida. You know, back in Vegas, they have rec mar- marijuana. It brings in so much money, so much tax money. Uh, and it's a shame, Dan, that, that they have a stranglehold down there, like Tony Montana uh, down here uh, on the market. Uh, oh, yeah, no, that's, but that's by design. I mean, that's oh, yeah. Because, one of, yeah, DeSantis, if you look, one of, yeah, one of the first things he did early on at the urging of Matt Gates, he, he was making medical reform early on. And a guy named John Morgan, another lawyer, uh, the Morgan and Morgan out of oh, wow. Orlando. Yeah he, he, yeah, he was one of the ones who helped push to get the marijuana things on the ballot. So, yeah, John Morgan's a Democrat, but he's a big DeSantis fan because he's made him a bunch of money, you know. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And, and I yeah, understand. This is, I mean, these are all Republicans, but it's not just, a, you know, it ain't just Republicans that are dirty, you know. No, it's a club. It's, I come from Staten Island, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I know what a club is, trust me. Uh, I, I understand, too, maybe you're not familiar with this, but that some of these medical marijuana companies trace back to Russian oligarchs. Are you familiar with that? I don't. Okay. It doesn't surprise me, but, I mean, I know if one of the other people on our list, Lev Harness, was... Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's keep moving on. Yeah. Brian Ballard, what can you tell us about him? Well, Brian Ballard, yeah, he's I've, I've known him a long time. He's probably the um, the top lobbyist, you know, in the state. Uh, and there's nobody, if you want to get somebody to get something done, he's the person, you know. So um, he's basically, you, it's kind of like a revolving door in Tallahassee where, you work for DeSantis, and then you leave, and you work for Brian Ballard, or you work for another lobbying firm, and then, or you work for Ballard's firm or a similar firm, and you go to the, you know, he's got Pam Bondi over there, he's got, you know, all, you know, all sorts of folks that are, it just kind of, there's, there's no real delineation between government and, and lobbying in Tallahassee. So it's just, he's, he's, you know, he's the master at it, that, you know, he's the cheapest, you know, one of his longtime partners, his son, um, was the deputy chief of staff and chief of staff of DeSantis. So basically, if you want, you need a lobbyist in Tallahassee if you want to get them done. So you go to somebody like Brian Ballard, he fixes you up, you know, his partner's son, is the chief of staff to the governor. Mm. Then now where the chief of staff, the son, used to be chief of staff to the governor. He left the firm. And where do you think he left the governor's office? And where do you think he works now? He works for Ballard. Yeah. Um, so it's basically there's no real line between, you know, corporate lobbying and the governor's office. And so one, Brian Ballard, and he's mastered that. I, I'm not aware of him being any other criminal investigations he just you know uh, just a you know he's just he's just taking advantage of a system that um that is permeated tallahassee because basically what happened in tallahassee is there's no balance anymore so it's all republicans particularly now there's a republican governor republican legislature and there's no there's no um dissent allowed so it's basically lobbyists competing for their clients to get the most of the, of the pie so you know it's just and it's right for corruption and you know it's it's just, just it's just um that's just the way it is and most people don't think that don't people don't, most people don't know that i guess that people don't realize how much lobbyists run things they you know because they know they know the history these legislators have term limits and in order to get elected as a legislature you have you have to raise money. And who raises the money for you? The lobbyists. So it's it just basically legalized corruption. I, I guess so, unless you get indicted, it's just basically sanctioned corruption. Yeah, it's the way the system's uh, created to operate. And it shouldn't be like that. I mean, that's the problem, that, it, there, that there's no oversight. I mean, you know, I try to run for attorney general. I would be looking at it. But the current attorney general is just as dirty as all these other people. So. Yeah. And, and that's why these things happen. That's why... Okay, you look at this. Okay. At some point, though, what happens, and, and I'm just continuing to document it and talk about it, is eventually you do something you really can't walk away from. And that's what Kent Sturman, when he, a week ago, pulled up to the parking lot of the post office outside Jacksonville and put a gun to his head. He knows what he did. He knew what he was hoping to, you know, he, he left his family, his wife and kids, mm. 
just in a, in a shithole. In a, in a horrible situation. So why do you so i mean so i mean you can you can roam the sheriff's office you can yeah. you know put up the governor but ultimately it gets caught up with you i mean like this harding guy he filled out a bunch of forms it, it's a slam dunk matt gates he's he's slippery he, he he ain't easy joe greenberg he got caught lev parnas he got caught eventually they all get caught and that's what is what i'm that gives me hope well, Greenberg, it seems like he got caught because his wife was saying that he's bipolar. And when he was doing a standoff, he was saying, I don't want to go to jail because I'll get dope sick. This guy seemed to be totally off the rails. Yeah, there was you know, that's, that, a lot of this. There was a lot of drugs involved. Yeah. These trips with Bashirs and Gates and Greenberg. I mean, apparently Greenberg's wife was sleeping with Matt Gates, from what I understand. And, um, you know, a lot of just seedy. I mean, it's like. You, you know, the Republican Party, I, you know, always, well, I guess they really can't anymore, but used to be the, they always remember, say, the Family Values Party, you know. Yeah. But you got these guys cheating on their wives, traveling around, sleeping with teenage girls, doing drugs, trafficking in sex. You know, it, it, it's, it, they're just criminals, you know. And Lev Parnas. Lev Parnas, yeah, a lot of people, yeah. He, Lev Parnas was the Ukrainian. Now he's in prison. Uh, he was sentenced to two years in prison for campaign violations and was uh, early an active DeSantis supporter. Uh, he and his uh, associates donated $50,000 to DeSantis' political committees and met with him at least half a dozen times. Uh, he was very involved with Rudy Giuliani, uh, another criminal. Um, and, you know, he basically was another guy that helped get DeSantis elected in 2018. And uh, and then you know DeSantis has just said I don't know who you know I don't know who this person is you know he's you know I don't who you know like he, yeah he's just a you know he's a criminal and he's a early DeSantis supporter uh, and you know he's just he's just who just DeSantis in order to get to where DeSantis got he needed people to like Lev Parnas to get him there. It's interesting, too, because I tried to book Lev Parnas a couple of times, and uh, he seemed to be um, willing to talk and testify against everybody, but nobody wanted to hear. Yeah, no, he apparently he had some sort of coming, come, come to, you know, I'm Jewish, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> Uh, he came to some enlightenment, I guess, and, yeah. which is good. I mean, I think Joel Greenberg, you know, came to some enlightenment and decided to testify. But, yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, that's better, I guess, than just, you know, like blindly professing innocence. You know, it is better than the alternative, I guess, when somebody like Greenberg I guess he was, he didn't really have a choice. I mean, there was so much evidence. It was hard to, <laughs> to not, um, you know, because he was probably looking at a lot more. He got 11 years. He's probably looking at a lot more than that. Um, and in Parnas, he, you know, he, he got a, re you get reduced sentences if you cooperate. So, I mean, yeah. you know, it's not always just, you know, we give these guys like a little bit of credit, but I mean, it ain't like they don't get some benefit for, for admitting because it saves the government a lot of money and time. He actually did go to trial, which was a cost of fortune, but Greenberg, you know, he, he, Pled, he gave up a lot. We don't know everything he gave up, obviously, but I'm sure um, there's there's still I'm, I'm sure there's gonna, there, the number of investigations that are open right now in Florida and elsewhere based on what he's given up is who knows how I many. I mean, he knows a lot. But are any of these investigations like from from uh, agencies outside of Florida? Well, he got processed. Well, I mean, they were federal. He got charged by the U.S. Attorney, U.S. Marshal, so. yeah. Well, U.S. Attorney, and, you know, that's overseen by the Justice Department. So, right. but yeah, I mean, there's a. a, a I don't know everything he he, re, he revealed, but it's uh, yeah significant from what I understand. Did you see the the video when he went to his ex wife's house and he, he violated his uh, uh, release, and she's whispering to the cops, "His parents are buying me a house. They got a lot of money." <laughs> like, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Yeah, because they were in the middle of divorce. I guess they got divorced. Well, I think she divorced him while he was in prison. Or, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of entitlement. Yeah, because yeah. like like Joel Greenberg, like Matt Gates, both came from wealth. You know, families that had enabled them and with connections with money and 
Um, yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. Where, <laughs> where, where the? Well, because they have. I mean, that happens. I do family law. I mean, you, 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 the parents of the don't. You know, they they have grandkids. So I mean, you know, and their sons in prison. So you know, they got to be nice to the the daughter. Either they want to see their grandkids, right? I mean, so <laughs> it ain't. It's not. You know, I don't know about buying a house. It doesn't. I don't know if they actually bought her a house. I, I remember her, that that discussion. But yeah. I mean. But I mean, it's unfortunate that you know. From what I understand, his his father was you know a successful dentist and you know built a good name and a good business and you know for and you know and the same thing with Matt Gates's dad. His dad was very um, influential and powerful and but I mean he's got you know clearly he's disappointed by what his name has been turned into mm-hmm. by his sons. You're like these rich playboy kids said, let's go play in politics, you know? Let's just go. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I would say some of these is Dana Deplorables. Um, yeah. yeah, well, Gates, Greenberg. Um, yeah, certainly those two. And, you know, there's others out there. I mean, um, yeah, it's, it, yeah. Did we cover Larry Keefe? Yeah, we did. We yeah. did. Okay, then the next one down here, I think it's the last one, too. I know you're busy. Uh, Christina Pushaw. What can you tell us about her? Pushaw, yeah, Pushaw. She is. Pushaw. Christina Pushaw is the governor. He's, he hired her to be his press person. Gotcha. Uh, she is very aggressive in terms of attacking people on Twitter, social media, gaslighting. Um, she recently was caught uh, failing to register as a foreign agent. Small thing, you know, seems to be a common thing. Um, and so, yeah, basically she's just a, another... Just deplorable, just gaslights, lies, dog whistles, anti-Semitic, just a, just the bottom of the barrel, just trash. Yeah, I've seen her on Twitter. Yeah, she's a real bulldog. But now, what is uh, her, um, what, what country was she an Asian for? Uh, it was for, uh, it was Georgia. Oh, really? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. What do yeah, you know? She just failed to, failed to note that she, uh, you know after getting caught that she received um, I guess uh, over I guess 25,000 on behalf of the um, Georgia and just kind of slipped her memory I guess kind of like this guy I mean I didn't even mention this guy David Rivera Marco Rubio's good friend just got indicted for you know for 50 million dollars of money laundering for the Venezuelans and he didn't I mean, you have to register if you're a forward agent. I mean, it's just kind of a, you know, if you're getting paid 25 grand by the country of Georgia, you know, she knew. I mean, mm-hmm. the only reason, yeah, I mean, that's not something you're, like, unaware of, of the requirement to do. So, I mean, so, yeah, she was working in Russian politics, you know, probably where she learned a lot of her tricks, you know. What do you know about this woman, Rebecca Jones? She was like, a, she was counting the COVID statistics. I know Rebecca. I know her very well. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, what, what can you tell us about her story? Because it seems like her cases were really trumped up. Yeah, I mean, Rebecca worked as a um, as a data scientist for the for DeSantis. Uh, she worked on like hurricanes. Uh, things and she ultimately worked on the. She built a dashboard for the COVID numbers uh, for DeSantis, and then during the course of that work, she believed that there were things that were being done wrong, not properly disclosed, in order to encourage reopening of the state. And they went after her and yeah. they destroyed her, and then. <laughs> They arrested her, and they just, and that was one of the things Pushaw was hired, because Pushaw had been working on her for months before she was hired by DeSantis. And so, yeah, I mean, she was a, she was the, um, she ran for Congress against Matt Gaetz. She did not win, but you know, I know Rebecca. She's, she's a tough person. She's a, you know, she's not afraid. Yeah, and, and one of the charges was basically arguing with her baby's father. That was, oh. <laughs> Yeah, she's never, yeah. That what she was, what they raided her house for was there was alleged that she had yeah. uh, hacked into the the system and warned people about. And so they raided her house, pulled guns, you know. So, and I, from what I understand, she's she's now 
come to an agreement with the government on that after several years. Yeah, but prior to that was that other bogus charge. Oh, you do family law. Uh, could, you, could you ever get uh, your uh, client's ex-spouse arrested on that kind of crap? Uh, she wasn't ever convicted on it. Yeah, no, she was. They dropped it. Yeah, the DA dropped it. Right. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's a, there's a... Correct. No, yeah, and, and, you know, that was... Yeah, I mean, there was a... Which is kind of a wrong... I mean, because they, they go out like Rebecca Jones, and they, yeah. they say all these things that she's a criminal, and then look at my list. I mean, look at the crimes that, that in my list that have not... They're not allegations. They're... I mean, they're indictments. They're, you know convictions there's plea agreements there's jail time i mean you know this man joe harding i mean he it's pretty clear he signed these i mean I, there's not a lot of wiggle room on you sign a document to get 150,000 covid loans saying your two businesses have 30 employees and make $400,000 when that's just false I mean, I, I don't know how he gets out of that. I mean, Matt Gates has skated. I mean, but Joel Greenberg, I mean, he played. He got 11 years. I mean, Lev Parnit. I mean, so it's, yeah, it's for them to go after people like Rebecca Jones for a domestic issue with an ex-boyfriend and turn her into some sort of criminal, you know, in the in the media when, I mean, it, it's a lot of its projection and, you know, of their own things. So, I mean. Yeah, I could just imagine Which, that... Particularly when you have a guy like Donald Trump who commits crime. I don't think he... I'm, he he's, I mean, I don't have any crimes Donald Trump commits in a regular 24-hour period. I mean, it's probably at least 10. Oh, I mean, yeah. you know, walking around. <laughs> Daniel Ufelder, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. If you ever have something you want to put on the air, just get a hold of me. We'll put you right on the air. You can find oh, him on... good. I enjoyed it. No, me too. We can find him on, on Twitter, D-W-U-H-L-F-E-L-D-E-R, Law. Uh, remove Ron, that's an easy one. You could find him there. Go to Remove Ron at Twitter, and then you can find the other one, the hard, one, the hard to spell one. His uh, Daniel U. Felder, Substack.com, and the law firm is D-W-U-Law.com. Uh, criminal defense, uh, bankruptcies, uh, personal injuries. Uh, what's the other thing? Um, uh, family law? Family law, litigate. Yeah, basically, I got a court a lot, you know. So. Yeah, and if you see the quality of the work he just does in his spare time on Twitter, you know he's doing good law work. Mr. U. Felder, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good night.